2023 is looking like another great year of Spider-Man content, with Across the Spider-Verse and Spider-Man 2 coming later this year. Since I absolutely loved Spider-Man 2018, I felt it was finally time to earn the platinum of Miles Morales. If you ask me, the best way to gain control of Spider-Man is to be in the middle of swinging from building to building, which is exactly what happens here. I really love that both games start off just like this, because I feel like I can just do this for like 20 minutes straight. It's just fun swinging around. Serving as the tutorial, we take care of some bad guys who break out of a prison truck and get our first taste of combat, and look who shows up. That's right, Rhino is back again and evidently has not learned his lesson since 2018. Which brings us to our first batch of trophies, which seem to come quick in this game. Oh, this is cool. While in the middle of trying to stop a rampaging rhino, we jump on its back. Oh, wait, I think there's a trophy. Now, instead of avoiding obstacles here in front of us, we actually run straight into them. I know this isn't very Spider-Man-like, but I'm willing to forego my heroic morals for a sweet trophy or two. Rhino Rodeo. And all that chaos caused in the mall isn't even enough to stop Rhino, which gets us into our first boss fight. Venom Punch, I love it. The mechanics here are pretty straightforward. We dodge his headbutt attacks, we throw our own retaliation punches when we get a chance, and after stopping him, we check in with our good friend Pete, who tells us he's going on vacation to Europe. I think this is supposed to be when Far From Home takes place, not like right here, but in another Spider-Verse I think, but correct me if I'm wrong. And before leaving, Pete gives us a gift, which means another trophy. They're coming in quick. It was good. This type of introduction, jam-packed with action, trophies, and a close-up of Miles' Tims is the perfect way to capture the introduction to a Spider-Man game. Crime doesn't rest for the wicked, so we immediately get to business. Our task is to investigate a break-in when I get caught by surprise. Bro, we almost- oh, we did get sucker punched! I thought we were gonna dodge it. At this point, I noticed a fun little trophy existed. I had to perform a 100 times combo. To increase your combo, you need to land hits on enemies and dodge their attacks. If you go too long without hitting an enemy, or if you get hit yourself, then your combo breaks. Simple, right? This really isn't too difficult to go for, but something incredible happened on my first attempt at it. I might be able to... I don't want to speak too soon. Might be able to hit 100. I was locked in on the game, just making sure I would not miss dodging an attack. Everything was going smoothly until I got to the last enemy. Come on, just a few more hits. We're right there. Bruh. There's no more enemies? What are the odds? That can't be too hard to do again, but what are the odds? Oh well, there's plenty more opportunities to earn that trophy later. Getting right back to work, we get to investigating another break-in. This time, there's only one bad enemy to deal with, and then we basically loot his belongings out of this chest, unlocking a new collectible throughout the map, which we're gonna revisit later for this trophy here. For now, this bad guy was working with his group to stop the Harlem Express from running. Of course, we beat them up too pretty handily before a quick little puzzle where we have to get the train cars back on their tracks. The bad guys don't really like that, so they resort to trying to bomb the train tracks at another location. That escalated pretty quickly if you ask me. After foiling their evil plans again, we rightfully earned the Harlem Express trophy. Oh nice, get the trains running again, let's go. Later that night, there's an explosion on a nearby bridge. Yes, the enemies in Miles Morales are very quick to just blowing stuff up apparently. We take care of some more enemies on the burning bridge, leading us to some really dope quick time events. Spider-Man's priority is always saving the people, which is exactly our intentions here. However, the authorities apparently didn't agree with us and they're not our biggest fans, so in a moment of distress, Miles gains the ability to go invisible. You see, Miles has a few abilities that Peter Parker does not have. He has the ability to use venom attacks which are electrified and he has the ability to cloak himself or be invisible for a short period of time. Cue the obligatory story trophy. Miles then gets a lead on tracking down the main villain, the Tinkerer. This next part is not a joke by the way, but we are on a mission to retrieve the Tinkerer's cell phone. Yes, I'm serious. The phone happens to be in a heavily guarded enemy base, so we sneak in through some vents and get the drop on some bad guys before they detect us. At this point, we interact with their computer and discover a couple more hidden bases throughout the city, pretty much unlocking access to these trophies here. The next room opens up, which happens to be filled with many more bad guys. I prefer to be stealthy when I play and work towards the these trophies, so that's what I did. So I have to take out this whole room without getting caught. My plan is to just sneak around and wait till it's safe to take somebody out and then just 
web my way back up and I think I should be good. It's way more fun with this strategy in my opinion and I also avoid the risk of dying unnecessarily. Win-win situation. The core of the problem, let's go. The very next mission has us taking a page out of ancient Greek history books and pull a Trojan horse. Basically, we pretend to become one of the bad guys, infiltrating their hideout and learning what they're up to. And then we turn around with this new intel and storm one of their headquarters that's absolutely filled with enemies. Seriously guys, there's a reason why these dudes here became criminals, they're not the brightest. Once again, my goal was to stay hidden as long as possible, taking out enemies whenever it was safe. And after ruining everyone's day and stealing their secret formula, we escape and earn the True Deception trophy. Let's go, True Deception. One step closer. Me saying one step closer feels like a, like a cheesy superhero cliche, I'm not gonna lie, but you know what, it fits. The Tinkerer really doesn't like that we trick them all and starts wreaking more havoc throughout the city, prompting another chase. In classic like superhero fashion, we destroy everything in our way. <laughs> There's not much else to say other than I feel like I earned a trophy for my hard work. Let's go, Velocity Skates. I like it. It was a fun trophy. Then soon after, it was time for some boss fights. First, we get into it again with our old friend the Rhino. This time, he's a bit juiced up, if you know what I mean, and we have to utilize not only our Venom attacks, but also some well-timed electrified debris that we throw at him to weaken him. This tactic creates openings for us, which leads to Rhino's demise. Exploding Bulldozer, let's go. With practically back-to-back -back boss fights, we're now up against Prowler. His ability to create clones for himself and to be able to teleport to other nearby locations is pretty cool, I have to say. However, he's not too difficult either, but that kind of goes without saying since it's a Spider-Man game. So here's our next trophy. Here we go, family drama. The second to last mission is a short flashback where we bump into two familiar faces. That's Pete. I'll attach the sticker. And beat our childhood friend at Flying Rockets. <laughs> It had to be done for this trophy though. Finally, we face off against the Tinkerer once and for all. This is easily my favorite boss fight in the game because it poses the greatest challenge compared to any other fight. The Tinkerer hits hard and hits often. And again, it isn't too bad because you just have to get used to the attacks and dodge until you get a chance to jump in for some hits of your own. There's a couple phases to this fight where the building gets progressively more destroyed and there's a couple new attacks to avoid, but all in all it's very manageable and pretty fun. After the fight and a few more cutscenes we earn the final story trophy. And there we go, ultimate sacrifice. Now the next step for this platinum is the cleanup stage before jumping into New Game Plus. I swung around town collecting time capsules of Miles' childhood. I just messed up, I have to go invisible, then grab. Urban Explorers, let's go. Postcards from Miles' dad, which gives us a heartwarming flashback from his memories of the two of them growing up. These weird audio recordings here where you're tasked with recording the right sound. By the way, these, I have to admit, took me a few minutes at a time to figure out. I like her taking the opportunity to dunk on you. They're in the middle of the conversation, but it's okay, deep cuts. That was the last audio sample. Finally opening up all the secret caches I mentioned earlier in the video. And this should be the last chest. Let's go, Salvager. With those collectibles out of the way, we can't forget about taking down the extra enemy bases in New York City. While cleaning up these bases, I also had an extra trophy to go for for completing an enemy base without being detected which really shouldn't be that hard, but it did take me a couple tries to finally do. I don't know how I just walked off there, got back up and they didn't see me, but I'm not gonna question it. Yeah, that didn't matter because just a few seconds later, this is what happens. Oh, they saw me, bruh. My second attempt at this trophy did go a lot better. I was crawling on the ceiling, getting the drop on enemies, which was the approach I took for about five minutes or so until I got a little too confident. Okay, that was risky. I don't know why I did that. Even then I was still undetected, so I was good. The game actually lets you know when it's safe to take down an enemy or when it's dangerous, meaning another enemy will spot you. This clip here shows that it changes from safe to dangerous at the last second. So I'm not bad at the game. I'm just unlucky. Ooh, this guy's alone. He messed up. Dude messed up. Oh, it said dangerous. Bruh. 
There's no way I messed up two times in a row. Yeah, I definitely did mess up two times in a row, but they do always say third time's a charm, so it's okay. I feel like I was being more careful with each attempt, as I should be honestly. And with taking extra caution, I found myself in a good spot to earn this trophy. I think there's only two guys left. And make that one. If I just go invisible... Let's go! Never saw it coming! Now before I tackle New Game Plus, I had to prove myself, and there's no better way to do that than completing the spider training challenges. These are challenges set by Peter Parker himself. First, a combat challenge where I have to web throw objects at these holograms. Very useful for crowd control if I do say so myself. Next is my favorite type of training, traversal. These are just fun because you get to sling around at high speeds, and the time to complete the race is pretty generous, so it's fun all around with no stress. All right, I didn't get ultimate, but I only need spectacular. That's the last one. Nice, launch, swing, and dive. I messed up there. I think I could have got 30 seconds, but it's okay. Lastly, the stealth training. These could be tricky because if you get caught even once, you have to start over. They're not lengthy challenges or anything, so again, pretty fun all around. And with all the training completed, we earned the trophy for 100%ing all districts. And a new home for 100% the entire districts, the entire map. Now, let me just check my phone before starting New Game Plus. Very easy trophy. I haven't mentioned it yet, but if you don't already know, this game is pretty short. Most of you are cultured and have already played this game before me, so you knew this already. But just to drive this point home, I got New Game Plus done in under 5 hours. Honestly, it was probably closer to 4 hours if you don't count idle time. During New Game Plus, I unlocked all skills for a trophy, and all suits for a trophy, both of which cannot be done any earlier. After beating the game, I had two tasks left to cross off my list. First is paying tribute to the Marvel legend himself, Stan Lee. It's honestly pretty awesome that Stan got a tribute memorializing him in this game forever. If you ask me, every Spider-Man game moving forward should contain a tribute of some kind. And finally, last but certainly not least, we visit Miles' hero. With this final trophy for visiting his father, we'll earn the Platinum Trophy. I mentioned that Platinum Spider-Man 2018, which is just as amazing as this game. If you want to watch that, click on the screen here.